Rise to your feet, please, if you are able to. In faith, because we believe that tonight the siege over Nigeria is over, the siege over your family is over, the siege over your life is over. Even though we are yet to see the manifestation, but because we believe and we are convinced in our hearts, believe the Lord your God, you will be established. Believe his prophets, you will prosper. When I say the siege is over, you shout, the siege is over. The siege is over! The siege is over! The siege is over! Praise the Lord! Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Thank you because you are the God that caused the things that be not as though they are. And because you are our Father, you have given us your own spirit that we also believe and speak. And we speak with every confidence and assurance. We declare tonight, the siege is over. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Breaking the siege. It is important for you to know the process so that you can go through it. If God leaves a siege and you do not know what happened before he lifted the siege and why he lifted, you are likely to slide back and get into another siege. So tonight I share with you on breaking the siege may the lord grant you and grant us and grant me the understanding of his revelation what is a siege traditionally it's a military blockade barrier or barricade set up by the enemy or adversary to restrict freedom of a people and by such restriction, bring the people to their knees in complete surrender. The intent usually is to bring the people under into servitude, to reduce people to slaves, rob them of their dignity and liberty, to rob them of their wealth and prosperity, Rob them of their joy and peace. Rob them of their health and wealth. Rob them of every good thing and every good virtue. That is the purpose of a siege. But I would like you to know that a siege is a curse. It is listed as one of the latter causes unleashed on unrepentant people of God or a wicked nation that has refused to honor God. There is no costless siege because there can be no costless cause. Just as there is no costless cause, there is no costless siege. If there is a siege, there is a cause. And since we all acknowledge that our nation is going, is under a siege, then there is a cause. Proverbs 26, 2. Proverbs 26, 2. As the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the cause costless shall not come. Like a fluttering sparrow, like a flying swallow. So a cause without cause 
shall not alight. In Numbers 23, 8, Balaam said, Numbers 23, 8, How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How shall I defy whom God has not defied? How shall I put a curse on the person that God has not cursed? I told you that a siege is one of the listed curses in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45 to 49, verse 52 and 53. Deuteronomy 28, verse 45 to 49. He said, moreover, all these curses shall come upon them and pursue and overtake them until they are destroyed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord your God, their God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which, is, which he commanded them. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. 27, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. For the abundance of everything. Usually, people backslide when abundance comes. They stop, they stop serving him. 49 says, Therefore, the Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth. A nation whose language you do not understand. 52. Then, they shall besiege you at all your gates. Fifty-three. The last part of fifty-two says, and they shall besiege you at all your gates throughout all your land. Fifty-three. It will get to the point that you begin to eat the fruit of your own body, the flesh of your sons and your daughters, whom the Lord your God has given you, in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy has distressed you. When our sons go out to steal or defraud, when they kidnap or kill, and our daughters go out to prostitute and strip, to bring in money for us to feed, we have slaughtered our offspring for food. It is a cause that will surely take its toll on the land and the family. Two sieges to mind in the scripture. The siege in the days of Elijah, the siege in the days of Elisha, and the third one, the siege in the days of Ezekiah. In the days of Elijah, there was a siege. But it was a spiritual siege. An army of prayer warriors under the leadership of Elijah blocked the heavens and held back rain and dew from, from Israel for three years and six months. That was a siege. When it is God raising a siege against you who can help you according to first kings chapter 17 and 18 according to james chapter 5 verse 16 elijah mobilized prayers against israel that there should be no more rain in the land this prayer and said Elijah except at your word there shall be no more rain have are the blessings of God no longer flowing in your life then you are under a siege is the heaven over you short is your labor no longer yielding there is likely a siege in Deuteronomy 28, verse 23 and 24. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23 and 24. And your heavens, which are over you, 
shall be bronze and the earth and the Lord will change your rain, the rain of your land to powder and dust when there is a siege the rain stops falling the blessings stop flowing because there is a siege but there was a godly nation a repentant nation that came under a siege it was judah under hezekiah in second chronicles 32 verse 1 to 3 Second Chronicles 32, verse 1 to 3. After all these deeds of faithfulness, of returning to God, of righteousness, of rededication to God, by Hezekiah, leading Judah back to God, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against it. Thinking to win them over to himself. And when Ezekiel saw that Sennacherib had come with this purpose to make war against Jerusalem, his people, why will a godly king like Hezekiah suffer a siege? Before coming to Jerusalem, Sennacherib had gone to Samaria and besieged it for three years and he had taken Samaria. Now he came to Jerusalem thinking to take it also but he came too late because before he came Ezekiah had led his people back to God in repentance. Sennacherib led over 185,000 soldiers against Judah and against Jerusalem. When the people of God are under a siege, they lose their liberty and dignity. Their lives hang in doubt and they are overwhelmed with fear and anxiety. Not sure of life, not sure of the future. They become depressed. Ezekiah and all Judah faced ridicule. They became a laughing stock. They faced humiliation. They begged. They were ready to pay tribute. They made appeals to the enemy. But he turned them down. He would not accept anything less than total surrender and captivity. Then Ezekiah turned to God in prayers. Whenever a siege is building up against the people of God, they come under until they start borrowing and begging. Look at it. We have become a nation of borrowers and beggars. Look at it. Our children are finished school and they are going hungry on the streets. A lot of them are taken to all kinds of conditions. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy 28 verse 43 says, When the people of God come under a sea, he said, The alien, the stranger who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you. And you shall come down lower and lower. Ah! He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the chain. Today, by the mercy of God, Every condition that has come upon you, upon me, upon us, as a siege, may the mercy of God reverse it. Please, if you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. If you are tired of borrowing, say it loud and clear. If you are tired of begging, say it loud and clear. If you are tired of being trampled under, say it loud and clear. As nations come under siege, families come under siege. Job, a 
righteous God fearing man and his entire family came under siege. In Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, God recommended Job as a righteous man that fears God. He was the wealthiest in the entire zone. But there was a day in verse 13, Job 1 13. There was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their eldest brother's house. And then calamity struck. And from one state to the other, all his cows, all his sheep, all his camels, all his businesses came under attack, destroyed totally, and finally a strange wind came against the house where his children were celebrating and they all died in one day stand to your feet say father have mercy on me every siege that the enemy has raised against my life against my family Put an end to it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear you say amen to that. Be seated. When they brought the news to Job, Job said, ah, this is a siege. Everything gone. He tore his dress, rolled on the ground, and worshiped God and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I shall return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the expectation of Satan was that Job will deny God. The purpose of a siege against a believer and a God fearing man is that you may lose your faith. And when Job refused to deny God, Satan went the second time. And God said, have you seen? Have you seen that Job refused to deny me? Have you seen? Satan went down from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from his head to his feet. And he took for himself a pot shed to scrape himself. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Job was crying day and night. After the loss of everything, then his health was attacked. Then, when Satan watched Job, that Job was still not denying God, he entered into his wife. And said, do you love your husband? Look at him suffering. If you love him, better tell him to curse God so that people will stone him to death. It's better to die than to suffer. His wife said to him in verse 9 of Job chapter 2, do you still hold your integrity? Curse God and die. He said to her, you speak as one of those foolish women. It was a siege against his business. A siege against his wealth. A siege against his career. It was a siege against his family. It killed all his children. Collapsed all his business. Destroyed all his businesses. It was a siege against his health. And well-being. And then, a siege against his marriage. When the woman you love now wants you dead. And not just dead. She's saying, curse God die and go to hell job lost everything but you need to understand when there is a siege you must know why it came job did not know why it came he accused god of being responsible for the siege until God opened his eyes. In breaking the siege, I will share with you quickly what you need to do. You need a prophet and a word 
to break the siege. It was prophet Elijah that called off the siege against Israel and restored rain. When he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. It was prophet Elisha that gave the word that terminated the siege against Samaria. When it became so intense that women were slaughtering their children for food, Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow at this time, a seer of five flowers shall be sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. By this time tomorrow, he said, the siege shall be over, and there shall be abundance. Let me prophesy over you that from this night forward, as you take the word of God in, the siege over your life shall be over. It was prophet Isaiah that gave the word that terminated the Assyrian siege of over 180,000 soldiers led by Sennacherib himself. Hear what Isaiah said to Ezekiah. He said, Thus you shall say to your master, Do not be afraid of what Sennacherib is saying. I will send a spirit upon him. I will cause him to return to his own land. So for a seed to be broken in your life, number one, you need the ministry of a prophet and the word from the prophet. Number two, you need to listen to God and hear God clearly. Usually, men fail to hear God because of their pride. For you to hear God, and hear him clearly, you need to humble yourself. Job was very proud of his righteousness until God brought him down. He had to listen to God. And God exposed to him his pride, his fear, and God revealed to him what you are accusing me of is Satan that did it in your life. Job was full of his own righteousness. See what he said in Job 31 35. Job 31 35. He said, Oh, that I had one to listen to me. Here is my mark. Oh, that the Almighty will answer me. That my prosecutor had written a book. Chapter 32, verse 1. His friends ceased to talk to him because he was righteous in his own eyes. Verse 2. Then Elihu took over and spoke. He was angry with Job because Job justified himself rather than God. He justified himself. Elihu told him, You have spoken in my hearing and I have heard the sound of your words. Say, I am pure without transgression. I am innocent and there is no iniquity in me. Yet, he finds occasion against me. He counts me as an enemy. Look, in this, you are not righteous. I will answer you. For God is greater than man. Why do you contend with God? For he does not give accounting of any of his words to anybody. Job became humble. If you want to break out of the siege tonight, humility is a must. There is a word that will break the siege, but you cannot assess that word except you are humble. So, 
You need a prophet with a word. Number two, you need to listen. And for you to listen properly, you need to humble yourself. Number three, mercy is the principal thing you need to break a siege. There is no siege that ever stands without a cause. Because a siege is always the result of rebellion. So you need mercy. But there can be no mercy without repentance. And there can be no genuine repentance without humility. <laughs> there can be no genuine repentance without humility. The reason why King Saul could not repent was pride. He said to Prophet Samuel, Honor me before the people. Don't mind what I have done. That is not repentance. May pride not stop you from receiving mercy tonight. If you look at the call of God, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, it is very difficult, almost impossible to repent if you are not humble. So the enemy uses pride to sustain the siege by telling the people under the siege, you don't need to repent. You don't need to obey God. Justify your sin. Pride makes it extremely difficult. But let me tell you one thing about pride. Lucifer was a holy angel, wise, beautiful, extremely intelligent. In fact, the wisest among the angels. But the day pride entered into his heart, he became Satan. You may prophesy, you may speak in tongues, you may wrought miracles. If you are too proud to humble yourself and really repent, you are too proud to find mercy. May you not may you not fail to find mercy tonight the seeds cannot be broken without mercy the seeds cannot be over without mercy even now after declaring elijah wanted when finally he saw elijah he said This is the enemy and the troubler of Israel. Elijah said, you and your father's house are the troubler of Israel. Ahab humbled himself. He said, okay, prophet Elijah, I surrender. Whatever you tell me, I will do. He said, let's meet at Camel. Bring two cows. Come with all the leaders. Come with all the prophets of Baal. We are going to know who is God. Ahab believed and obeyed he humbled himself if he had not humbled himself to do what elijah said the famine would have continued but tonight every siege in your life in your family in your ministry in this nation shall come to an end so for you to find mercy you must humble yourself. And don't let me forget this. If you are looking for mercy, better start showing mercy to others. If you want God to forgive you, start forgiving others. Number four, humble yourself in repentance and cry out to God. In 2 Kings chapter 19, Ezekiah tore his dress, rolled on the dust, and cried out to God. 
and he sent a message to the prophet prophet isaiah there is trouble there is fire on the mountain he humbled himself and cried out to god second kings 19 1 to 4 and in second kings 19 14 to 19 he prayed opened the letter of the enemy before god finally prophet isaiah spoke say go back to your master tell him thus said the lord fear not that man will not enter here so he declared that man will not enter this place the way he came is the way he will go back the prophet continued i give you a sign this year you will eat what grows of itself next year you will eat what springs from it but in the third year you will sow you will plant you will harvest the siege is over god said i will defend this city that was the word of god ezekiel believed number six you must believe his prophet you must believe in god once god speaks you must believe god has spoken to his servants that the siege is over and i'm repeating to you that the siege is the siege is the siege is there was a prime minister who did not believe the word of prophet elisha he said elisha this prophecy is to save your head if you say god will open the windows of heaven and so much food a bag of rice will be sold for two thousand naira, and a bag of beans will be sold for three thousand naira. <laughs> he said, "If God should open the windows of heaven, can it be?" Ah, that prime minister made a terrible mistake. Then Elisha turned to him. Ah, he said when did i become a liar when did god of heaven become a liar except the lord has not spoken by me he said you will see the abundance but you will not eat out of it now listen to me don't make the mistake of doubting the word of god or rejecting it because it will certainly happen but those who don't believe will not partake of it now you are not of those who do not believe so tonight say with your mouth i have faith in god i believe god i believe his servant i will do everything required for me to find mercy and the siege is over and the siege is over can i hear you say amen to that in second chronicles chapter 30 chapter 32 verse 20 to 23 second chronicles chapter 32 verse 20 to 23 because Ezekiah and prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. The Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor. And 185,000 people died in one night. And the people began to rejoice. Because the siege is over, those who have led the siege against you shall be no more yeah. 
I share with you a contemporary story of a family that came under siege. And then we will pray. The father of the family died suddenly, untimely death. And the oldest son of the family became the major breadwinner. The oldest lady too became a supportive breadwinner. There were still younger ones in the family that were still going through school. And the young man began to take care of his mother. He was a banker and he did very well and excelled in his work. For three years consecutively, he was rated the best in his department. And so he was promoted and lifted every year. He was so good at the job that he became the envy of his colleagues. Why only him? By the time he had the third lifting, his money had become more than sufficient. And he decided to treat himself to pleasure and fun. Even though he was married, he looked for a girlfriend outside his marriage, furnished a room for her, provided everything for the lady, and the lady was servicing him as a concubine. Before long, he began to make mistakes in his work. He was falling into error. And they told him that he was beginning to receive queries. So very quickly, he resigned his job because of series of queries. His older sister also lost job. And then, the youngest child in the family, who was a member of our church, said to him, say, brother, our family is under a siege. Our father has died. You have lost job. My elder sister has lost job. Hunger will kill us. What shall we do? She said to him, let us go for prayers. And they came for a conference. After listening to his story, God revealed that he went into adultery and lost his fortune. He applied to new banks. Every bank he sent his CV, invited him for interview. But after the interview, they will shut down everything. Three times it happened. He knew he was under a siege. But after I spoke to him, he humbled himself. He said, what do I do? I said, put away your concubine. Turn back to God. Start serving God. I'll pray for you. The Lord will restore what you have lost. He humbled himself. He put away the concubine. He began to serve the Lord. In less than three months, he received three invitations from the three banks. Offer of job. And each offer gave him a salary much more than the previous place of work. And then number four, the former place of work where he resigned sent him an invitation that he could come back and pick up his job if he was available. He came to me to share his testimony and he brought his wife. He said, sir, I want to thank God. My jobs are back. I have three offers. Which one do I take? I have confessed to my wife. I have put away the concubine. And we are together. He brought his wife. He said, from the time you spoke to me, I did not go back again. Do you want the siege to be over? Do you want the siege to be over? Do you want the siege to be over? You must humble yourself. I don't need to tell you what you've done wrong. I don't need to tell you you're a backslider. You know. I don't need to tell you you're a sinner. You know if you are one. But if you want the siege to be over, you have seen your family under a siege. Your health is under a siege. Your career is under a siege. 
Your ministry is under a siege. Humble yourself tonight. That the siege may be over. Let us bow our heads. I want to pray. You want mercy of God tonight. I have told you. The principal thing that will break a siege is mercy. And there can be no mercy. Except there is repentance. And there can be no repentance. Except there is humility. It is you. Who will say to God. I am sorry. I need your help. So if you want the siege to be over in your life. And you are tired. Come right. Come out right now. I'm going to pray with you. Everybody under the sound of my voice. That wants to be forgiven. Go to the nearest altar to you. If you are in this auditorium, start coming out. If you are in the old, old auditorium, start going to the altar. If you are in any of the viewing centers, move out to the altar. If you are watching in your home, stand to your feet. Because you want the siege to be over. So tonight, that the siege may be over in your life. I'm going to count one to ten. And anybody under the sound of my voice, who wants to be forgiven? You want to find mercy. Start coming out. And I'll pray with you tonight. One. You need mercy tonight. You want to be forgiven. Start coming. And come quickly. And come quickly. Don't deny yourself the mercy of God. Don't deny yourself. Come quickly. One. Two. I see some people coming from very far. I'm aware that you are coming. Please keep coming. Keep coming. Find your way to the front. You will not go home the same. Three. Because this night, the siege over Nigeria shall be broken. The siege over your family shall be broken. Keep coming. Three. Keep coming. Four. And as you are coming, say, God, I am going out to find mercy. I am going out to find mercy. I am going out to find mercy. Five. I see those of you coming from very far. Just keep coming. Keep coming. That young man, he realized that he was under a siege. But when I told him, put away your sin, he humbled himself. Without humility, the siege cannot be broken. Ahab humbled himself. Ezekiel humbled himself. Six. I see those of you coming from my right. Please keep coming. Please keep coming. Don't stop. Keep coming. And as you come, begin to pray, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Put an end to this siege. This joblessness. This wasting life. Put an end to the siege of sickness. The siege of disease. The siege of failure. The siege of disappointment, the siege of sorrow, the siege of marriage breakdown. Job humbled himself. He said, God, I am sorry. He rolled in ashes. He said, I've spoken beyond my knowledge. Have mercy on me. Keep coming. Seven. I'm waiting for you, those of you from my left. I can see you coming. Just double up if you are able to run. If you are not able to run, keep coming and get here. Tonight, the siege must be over. Hey! 
right. Okay, I see those of you coming from the middle row. Please keep coming. Thank you very much. Just keep coming. You will arrive here. You will arrive here. Just keep coming. And as you arrive, or while you're on the way, begin to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Put away the siege. Have mercy on me. If God could show mercy to Ahab, if God could show mercy to Jehoram, if God could show mercy to Ezekiah, he will show you mercy. And the siege shall be over. Those of you who are on the way, keep coming. And those of you who are already out, say after me, My Lord and my God. Say it loud and clear. I need your mercy. Have mercy on me. Put an end to the siege. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Those of you still on the way, please keep coming. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, those of you on the way, keep coming. Keep coming. I'm still waiting for you. Say after me, my Lord and my God, thank you for sending Jesus to take away my sin. I believe with all my heart, Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son. I accept him today as my Lord and Savior. I believe with all my heart that Jesus died on the cross to take away my sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I surrender to you. I hand over my sin. Take my sin away. Let your precious blood wash me clean thank you father according to your promise if i confess my sin you are faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me i have confessed my sin have mercy on me i receive forgiveness i receive your mercy Thank you for forgiving me. I confess today that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I believe he died and rose from the dead. He is alive. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Now put your hands on your head as I pray for you. Those of you who are still on the way, let your hand be on your head and keep coming. In the name of Jesus, I command every siege over your life to be broken. Because you have cried to God in repentance. And you have called on the name of the Lord Jesus. Your sins are forgiven you. Because God has forgiven you. Receive mercy. Because God has granted you mercy. The devil's power. In troubling your life. Is broken in the name of Jesus. Now I decree. By the authority of the name of Jesus, receive the mercy of God. The siege over your life is broken. The siege over your life is over. 
it is over. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody rise to your feet and shout the siege is over seven times. The siege is over.